Well, good afternoon, everybody. Welcome back to the Power Hour podcast. Uh, I'm your host, uh, James Morton, otherwise known as Morton Power. Um, I gave you guys my full name just because uh, the guests I have today uh, were really good friends in real life. So we're just going to, you're going to hear me call by my real name. So I just wanted to get that out of the way. But today we have a very good friend of mine on the show. Uh, welcome, Daniel Baggett. How are you doing? I'm good. How are you doing? I'm doing pretty good, man. I'm actually really excited to have you on the podcast. Uh, I wanted to have somebody big for the first episode. Um, and well, <laughs> you're not... <laughs> you're big in the fact that you pretty much came up with the Morton Power brand, whether you knew it or not. Hey, there you go. Now that's true. So that's that's why I mean, like, big in a sense, because you're the one that essentially started all this. Oh, I'm honored. And, you know, who you never know. You throw things out there and some things stick. Morton Power just seemed to stick. It's I know. And true story, I thought that was the stupidest name ever when you told me that. <laughs> no, not stupid. It's pretty cool. Yeah, it actually it actually was really good. It rolls off the tongue. It does. <laughs> so I was just telling you before we started, I got some questions for you. Uh, so first question is, who are you today? Who am I today? Yes. Oh, man. Well. Uh, I am married. I am Daniel Baggett, but I am married uh, someone who's incredible. Um, oh man, I teach. Uh, I teach college students down here in uh, Stewart, Florida, um, and I still love Taylor Swift and a bunch of weird things, and get obsessed with a bunch of super weird things. Um, so pretty similar. You know me, and I know the people listen don't, but it's really similar to the guy I was before. And, um, and, uh, love Jesus, big Jesus follower. That's, I'd say that's me in a paragraph, uh, section. Awesome. And I, I will agree with you. Annika is pretty awesome. I've known, uh, awesome. I've known, like I said, I've known Daniel and Annika for many, many years. Uh, Daniel used to be my youth pastor, um, and worship pastor, um, at a church that we used to go to together. His dad was the main pastor there. So that's how me and Daniel, uh, got to know each other and uh yeah so uh like you said he teaches um history right history i teach history it's right okay so my next question actually feeds right into this if you weren't a professor what would you want to be doing with your life oh man if i was not teaching college what would i want to do well is money involved do, do i have to do i have to make enough money to pay bills from this profession it can be it could be anything Okay, if I could do anything, and then I'm going to rewrite my genetic code. I'm playing in the NBA because okay. uh, when I, and, uh, people who can't see me, I'm uh, only six foot tall. My vertical leap is like an inch high, and I'm really unathletic. But I still, when I was 12 or 13, I, my mom told me that um, if I practice hard enough, I could make the NBA, and that's just not true. <laughs> I was never going to make the NBA. So yeah, if I could do anything other than being a teacher, absolutely. I think I'm going to be an NBA player. <laughs> <laughs> I have to say you're one of the most unathletic big men I've ever met in my life. It's incredible, isn't it? I really can't move fast at all, and I still play basketball all the time. I can't even hurt myself. I've never, ever been hurt, seriously, because I'm not athletic enough to even hurt right. myself. So the only other person that I know who's pretty tall that is equally or more unathletic, but the viewers won't know who this is, but Covington. <laughs> yeah, well, I don't know. Covington, yeah, maybe, but Covington is more athletic than me. <laughs> yeah, well, well, we shall see. But yeah, uh, but yeah, so, um, but yeah, so NBA player. I'm too short to be an NBA player. Um, yeah, I'm, what I'm would too. You be? Oh man. Um. I'd I'd be a sportscaster. There you go. That's a pretty I, good one. Because I can talk. You know this, this better true. than anybody. I can talk. This is and true. I'm pretty knowledgeable in sports. So you I think all the games I'm in that I'm riding the bench in. Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> <laughs> so uh, what's the what's the thing that you're most proud of in your life, Daniel? Oh, um, well, you know, I told him that I was a youth pastor. Probably, not probably, the most proud thing I am is uh, my faith and uh, my relationship with God. Um, other than that, um, kind of everything flows through there. The most proud thing I am of is uh, probably my marriage, um, that I have a great marriage and that I am married to someone who is absolutely awesome. And I know those are not like uh, things I've made or 
something like that, but they're the most important stuff. Um, you know, and then number three on the list is probably the side project I made called Duval Davis. <laughs> and, <laughs> and, you know, I forgot probably- about that, but that is the greatest thing. I'm gonna yeah. edit in. So I'm gonna edit in a video of <laughs> Duval Davis. It's the greatest thing ever. Yeah, that would be a close three. So that way you could introduce that to some of your watchers. Duval. Davis. What about Crush? Because you created <laughs> but, Crush too. Crush is good. I saw a picture of Crush the other day. That was very. Those, and uh, that got us kicked out of the middle school for a good three months because um, I remember that. Yeah, if those who are listening, we made a fake boy band and <laughs> uh, and we took a photo shoot for a thing we were doing, and then then we acted like they were super famous, and these middle school kids bought it for a little while and feel like they were super famous. Anyways, it got us kicked out of the middle school for a little. Yeah, while. and they did like a big like album <laughs> reveal party in the youth group, and it was <laughs> god awful. Was that? What song did we do? I can't remember. I can't remember the name, but it was the stupidest song ever. It was very dumb. And I don't know if the youth group got that it was a joke. Like, I think some of them thought we thought it was real. But anyways, <laughs> yeah, Crush, Crush is up there. Duval Davis, Crush. I mean, oh, man. We have a murderer's row of things. <laughs> oh, yeah. Those were those were the great times. Maybe, um, maybe, oh, man, you got to help me with his name. Come on, James. The guy who played guitar with us, who got on stage and um, put like grease oil on himself and tried to. Mike Ingram. Mike okay, Ingram. I, it was just. It was just. I had a brain fart. Maybe number five on the list is Mike Ingram <laughs> letting us tie him up in chains and then not being able to get out. I'm gonna have to do like a full video on the stupid things we did. Actually, it would have to be a series because there's way too many things that Mike Ingram let us do together. And you guys, actually, the chat actually knows uh, Mike is Strider. He's uh, one of the mods in my Twitch chat. So, oh yes, yeah. You should bring a picture of when I cut Mike's hair. <laughs> oh my! God. His mom is still mad about that. <laughs> that was worth it, though. That was good. <laughs> oh man! So, uh. Yeah. So where do you see yourself in five years? Oh my goodness. Um, Hitting you with the good questions. You are. I don't know. We, I moved from Jacksonville down to Stewart and I, I, on that I would have, um, I know a, a boring answer is I don't know, but I have no idea. I, um, we'll see what a terrible, what a terrible <laughs> guest I am right now. I no, you're, know. you're good, we'll dude. See. Yeah. I don't know. Maybe kids by then, you know, yeah. I'm a, uh, if I don't start having children soon, all your parents, are, your this parents, true. this is true. So maybe in five years, I'll be staring at Wolf or <laughs> champion, you know, looking into my son's eyes. That's Chubbers. Five, yeah, there you go. <laughs> exactly. With another dog. Annika would never let you name a child that, you know, I've lost naming rights to the first two, but I don't know. You never know. James. That's probably a safe bet. And I applaud Annika for that one. Hey, listen, I named Morton Power, so maybe... Yeah, maybe that is true. That is true. Wolf, we'll give you credit for that. Yeah, Wolf might grow on people. <laughs> so, speaking of that, um, how did the Morton Power name come about? Oh, man. You know, I rolled off the tongue one day. I, from what I remember, we were in arts, and you yep. were leading a group of uh, students who did not know how to play almost anything. And yeah. uh, practiced with them almost every weekend. And I thought that'd be great because you used to be a student who who kind of didn't know how to play too much, but then got really good and played yeah. and practiced really hard every week. So it was like injecting the power, the Morton power <laughs> into the team. That's I that like that thought process. Yeah, exactly. See, I've never heard that part. You've never told me that part. All I know is one day um, I'm sitting there. We get the, the schedule released for the 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 lineup of the worship teams that we're going to play and I'm scrolling down and all of a sudden I see this name Morton Power. <laughs> and you know that you know that emoji where it's the guy with the face palm emoji. Yeah. I literally acted that emoji. I'm like, "Are you kidding me? What is wrong with him?" <laughs> well, <laughs> Because I thought that was the stupidest name on the face of the planet. Now, hindsight's twenty twenty with That's the right. whole brand, but uh, right. it's hindsight with a lot of things. Like, I used to despise Taylor Swift, and there was one youth trip we went on where everything that Daniel played was Taylor Swift. And out of nowhere, I just became this big Taylor Swift fan, and I'm like, what? is wrong with me all right well gotta clarify now this is right but that was in her heyday right now 
just, you know, want to update with the Swifties. I don't know what's going on with her right now. Her new stuff, I don't know. I can't stand by it. Her latest album where there's a snake on the cover. I don't know. Me and Annika watched the Netflix special of that. Mm. It was, I, I, anyways, you know what? You know who has replaced her? I'm going to give you another one. Is Casey okay. Musgraves. Okay, Casey yeah. Musk, I'll good. agree with that. I'll agree with that. Yeah. She actually is really good. That's right. So, uh, yeah, kids out there. Listen to Casey Musgrave. <laughs> Thank you later. <laughs> yeah. Okay, so now we're going to get into a little bit more of some funnier questions. I got a couple more for you. Uh, right. What's the most embarrassing thing you've ever done? Oh. <laughs> <laughs> to someone else or for that happened to me? For anything, myself. anything, anything. Oh, my goodness. Um, Annika's in the room with me. I'm trying to think. Annika, you asked me, <laughs> what is the most embarrassing thing I've ever done? Can you think of anything, Annika, off the top of your head to help me? I've done a lot of embarrassing things. Um, you know, I'm going to buy myself some time um, while I think. I Because it's much easier. I don't get embarrassed that easy. A lot of things. That's very true. And so I end up playing jokes on others. I once wrote, so my dad's a, uh, my dad is a pastor now, was a pastor, and I used to write his phone number everywhere I went. And I would just, like, anytime I signed up for anything, I would leave his phone number because old people always pick up the phone, and he picks up the phone anytime someone calls him, whether he knows Yes, he does. Not. So, anyways, I used to leave his phone number, like, on picnic tables, bathrooms, and I would put call me for a good time. And this was exactly when the, um, like, Bluetooth and cars came out. Oh, so, my yeah. dad had the whole staff that would fit three or four Ken Barney, all these people in his car. And he got, he started getting phone calls from people that said, Hey man, I found your in the speaker phone. I found your uh, phone number in a bathroom. It said to call you for a good time. So I, that's my answer. I've embarrassed my dad in so many ways, but I really don't get that embarrassed. And I don't know why I don't, but I, I find a lot of joy in messing with my father. I still do. See, I knew you were going to say something about your dad. Cause my <laughs> next question was, What's the favorite, most favorite prank you've ever pulled on your parents? <laughs> okay, well, that one isn't, I don't think that's a favorite. One I should have done, and I just did not go hard enough at it. Um, I should have rented their house out during the Super Bowl. Oh, uh, that would have been great. It, but I just didn't go hard enough. I was a little worried about messing things up. Um, oh, what about that pastor appreciation video you and Danny Kano did? Those were good, too. Yeah, we went out and found people and got them to say mean things about my dad <laughs> and told them what to say. Uh, this one, <laughs> that, that was pretty good. Those, yeah, those, those videos, those are, you know, those are better seen, though. I might need to give you a link to one of those. Uh, those oh, were, yeah, you absolutely do. Yeah, I was I actually watched one of those a few months ago. <laughs> I was thinking about one of those. Trike was much better at those than me. He had great yeah, ideas. Yeah, Trike was really good at pranking people and doing stuff like that. He was. <laughs> through all my questions um so um i got a couple for you that's okay, okay that's fine yeah go ahead my um my in-laws and i were all we had this big group thread we ranked our marvel movies and i'm curious i know i kind of oh. asked you this but i did not get a definite answer if you have to pick you only can pick three of the marvel movies what are the top three out of the 18 movie run they've had yeah right um iron man one that's a good, just because a solid choice just because that's where the whole universe started. Um, you'd have to go with the, the very first Avengers too, because that was that was the first time that we had like a big like multi-hero crossover movie. If I'm remembering correctly, in a long time. No, it was. Other, that, was a, that was a huge deal when that came out. And I'm not really talking about, like, the Fantastic Four or the X-Men, things like that. Like, legitimate stars that lead their own movies coming together to share screen time. So, that and then Endgame. The first part or both parts? Uh, the last part. You know, the last part. The last part, I feel like, has to be in the top three. I just, I can't imagine a list, although we have one in our group thread, where some people <laughs> did not put that in the top three. I can I see can't. why they didn't. Yeah, I can't imagine that not being in the top three. Annika saw that in the theater. She never sees movies in the theater. Those who are listening, my wife, her bedtime is like 7.30 at night, 8 o'clock. We never stay past the sun being up, and she does not like going to movie theaters. And we didn't tell her how long the movie was. 
um, until the tickets were like pre-bought. So that was great. I did that to my mom, too, because I took her to go see, because she likes those movies, so I took her to go see it when it came out, and we were standing in line for them to see, because it was a long line to get into the actual theater, and uh, I looked at her, I'm like, yeah, this is, by the way, this is a three-hour movie, she's like, what? I'm like, yeah, this is a three-hour movie. I know, and with and with previews and stuff. Oh, yeah. And you, and you know what's crazy, is like, I know, logically three hours one like I, I know that's crazy but it could have been another hour and i wouldn't care oh absolutely I go into it i don't want to spoil anything i know we're past a window yeah do you have any complaints with the finale do you have any or do you feel like it was like um well i actually so i'm gonna admit something i have not seen all the movies in the infinity saga there's tons man i, mean, I know like, i know there's, there's so like many like there it's I've maybe seen, I've seen the first two Iron Man movies, a couple of the Hulk movies, or the uh, Thor movies, but not really all of them in order. I want to, I want to do that uh, one day, but um, I don't know. I didn't really have any two big complaints. Now, at the end where, and this is probably going to spoil stuff, but I really don't care. It's my channel, um, where everybody came back. Well, almost everybody. Um, and they had that big fight scene at the end. Yeah. There was just way too many people on screen, and they did their best to to give everybody like adequate screen time. It was just a lot. Ooh, you know, I hear you. I bet if you watched those movies, the, o- the only crew. I'm not a huge Guardians fan. I like the rest. Yeah, I don't know. You might change your mind. There was a lot of people on screen, though. I don't yeah. know how. I have no idea how you put all that together. I mean, I know obviously, all those people weren't there at the same time. But, yeah, there's tons and tons of people on the screen. Oh, absolutely. At the very end. Um, and, have you seen Black Panther? Uh, no. Um, it's on Netflix, so I can watch it. But right. You should watch Black Panther. I think you'd like that. I probably will. I've, I've been meaning to every time. I go to watch it. I'm like, oh, but there's another episode of Arrow or The Flash I want to watch. Because I'm, because now that the seasons are over, I've been rewatching it again. Okay, are you gonna do like a? Uh, you need to do some sort of like farewell to Arrow podcast or something. I like do have summer, to summarizing Arrow because Arrow. <laughs> yeah, I. I may have to have you on for that. Exactly. You should. You're the one me. that got me into Arrow. Bingo. That's what you should have led with. That and Mormon power. <laughs> yeah. So Daniel has been the biggest influence, whether good or bad, uh, on me in a long time. A lot of the things that I'm into now, it's because of Daniel. Like one day, I uh, I was coming into the church for a Sunday rehearsal, and he was like, oh, dude, have you ever seen the show Arrow? It's like super good. So I go home, it's on Netflix, and I start watching it, and I couldn't put it down. It was right. so good. And like and every then, week, every week yeah. we'd have to talk about it. That was fun. I loved you getting there early. You would get James, those who, James would get there. He didn't have to, but James would get there super early on Sunday mornings and do a bunch of extra stuff. He wasn't getting paid or nothing. But we would get to talk Arrow and The Flash in the morning and do theories on who the villain was <laughs> that year in The Flash, even though The Flash has fallen off completely. Yeah, I, yeah. Like the crossover this year, it was, mm. I was excited for the crossover this year, and it just, it really disappointed me. Well, if the CW, I don't know, less shows, and keep, it's like they spread the talent out so thin mm-hmm. with the writers. Every show gets worse every time they do a, a Oh, absolutely. Show. And now they're adding, uh, well, they're subtracting Arrow, but they're adding uh, Batwoman. Yeah, I've seen some previews of that. And then, um, is, is this going to be another thing where we never see Batman? Uh, Probably. Like, during the crossover, they mentioned him so much. But I I know they have Superman on Supergirl now, so... <laughs> they got away with doing that somehow? <laughs> oh, yeah. Oh, yeah, he's been on the last two seasons. He was a Maybe. big story arc in the crossover. Maybe Robert Pattinson could show up in the CW <laughs> universe. <laughs> I, w- I would never watch it. I am not on the Robert Pattinson bandwagon. <laughs> Listen, I've, I'm just blank slate. I'm so in... Uh, it's Batman. Yeah, so he, I would have chosen someone else. But remember, when Heath Ledger was announced as the Joker, everyone ripped it. That's true. And then he did such an amazing job. That's right. So, you know, who knows? Robert Pattinson. Who knows? So the more the moral of this podcast is never throw out an idea right yeah. away. It always yeah, can be go. great. Just give it some time. <laughs> Let it mature. Give it some time. 
This is true. That is, that sounds like something I've said to you many times. You probably have. Yeah. All the words of wisdom that you've given me over the years. Like, <laughs> so, I now, um, I now am a uh, musician at a church. Um, now, again, myself, and I'm in more of a leadership role uh, than I had been in the past. And I've, I've been in leadership roles before. I was on staff at the church me and Daniel worked at, and I was awful when I was on staff there. And well, I'm not going to say that. Uh, you just – you weren't. You had, you had some stuff you were incredible at. And then just like you had some stuff you had to, you had to mature at. Me too, though, dude. I yeah, that's true. That I was but, bad at whenever I was there. But now, um, like, I'm – our pastor uh, is this. Is, uh, I've worked with him before. He was the interim kids pastor at the church. We were almost all the acquaintances I have in real life come from this one church. Um, and now he's the uh, he was the interim kids pastor at our church, and now he's the main pastor at the church that I'm at now. Um, his wife is our worship leader, um, and I work with her. Uh, and her son is our drummer, and I now feel. I now understand what it was like when I would, when you would have to say certain things to me on the stage on a Sunday morning. And I'm like, man, because back then I would be like, oh man, I hate this. I don't want to do this, blah, blah, blah. Or we cut something out of a song and I'm like, I, I threw the worst temper tantrums. We would cut something out of a song. Um, but now I'm like, well, you know, it, it fits in more, you know, it makes the song flow a little bit better. Um, yeah. And I have a better understanding now um, that That's I've good. been removed. And if you were to see me on, like, go through a, a rehearsal, you'd you'd be like, wait, is this the same James that I was with X oh, amount of years ago? You know what I want to see? I want to see you go through a rehearsal with a young electric guitarist that has practiced a solo all week. And then you have to tell him, listen, man, we're not doing a minute long guitar solo in the song. <laughs> I, I have not I have not admitted this, but there was one song I can't remember which one it was, but I practiced it so much, and I was looking so forward to playing that song, and we cut the whole song. <laughs> well, I was so devastated. <laughs> yeah, it happens sometimes, but you know, you know, you know, pastor comes along and says, you know, I, we need to do this today or this. It's just, it's just so many things. You, your grace is enough. Oh my God! Yeah. <laughs> so. I know you're not on Facebook much, but I posted one of my emo tweets or like emo tweets, but it was on Facebook. Okay. Um, and your dad commented on my thing with lyrics from your grace is enough. Of course he did. I mean, what? <laughs> of course I, he did. I appreciated the comment, but I seen it and I'm sitting there. I'm like, pastor Danny, what are you doing? You know, I, I'm not on Facebook too much. I, I, I have it. I, I, I don't know when the last time I logged in is, but I need to make like a, a Facebook bot of my dad. He just responds to everyone with lyrics, Chris Tomlin songs. or. Oh, Kerry my Kerry goodness. Songs, yeah. All of his uh, top 10 favorite songs. <laughs> and his favorite key is the key of F. I know. I've learned that lately. He, oh. That's what he plays in, man. Every song. Because I was with him when he was he was the interim pastor at the church I'm at now for the two months. Yeah, something like and that. I, yeah. And I was I was with him for about a month, and literally, and I can I can guarantee you the month that I wasn't with him, he was doing this too. Every song we played him was in the key of F. He, uh, <laughs> he can jam out in F. Or oh yeah. Other weird keys, but yeah. Oh, absolutely. And he loves his keyboard with the pre-automated beats on it. Isn't that great? Yeah. 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 <laughs> Great when it's great when it's just me and him, him playing keys and me on the acoustic. But when we had Jamie on the drums, it was killing him. Yeah, I'm sure. Trying, I'm trying sure. to keep up. I'm sure that was pretty tough. <laughs> oh man, but yeah. So um, I actually um uh, went and helped your dad with uh some work, not only at his church but at his shop. Um, so I've actually gotten to spend a lot more time uh with your dad. So the funny thing is, is when I first started going to Ocean Way which is the church that we were at, I was terrified of your dad. <laughs> I don't know you why. Know, you weren't the only one. He, 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 I don't know. Once you get to know him, you immediately are like, why was I scared of this guy? But he has this deep voice and, you know. And he, well, he, bud. Exactly. He can be real busy during the day. And so if you don't talk to him, it's like, man, yeah, this guy is intimidating. But yeah, that's oh, yeah. funny you were scared of him. <laughs> Yeah, so, um, because what had happened was, is, um, 
I was because the church that I was at, because um, just so you guys know a little bit more about me, um, I started at a small church in the town that I live in. And I was uh, like Daniel said earlier, I was a, I was a musician who didn't really know much or how to play very well because um, I'm self-taught. Like I never had like a lesson or anything. I've had people show me things, but not like full fledged lessons. And uh, the church that I was at, I left on pretty rough terms. Uh, me and the pastor uh, kind of didn't see eye to eye on some things. And I was coming into the church, and I didn't know really what to expect. And um, I was going off and on for a while. That was another reason why um, the pastor was upset at me at the old church was because he thought I was leaving to go to Ocean Way, which actually ended up happening. The musician that I am now, like, I wouldn't be where I'm at if it wasn't for uh, Daniel uh, me going to Ocean Way and me learning from Daniel or getting the crap scared out of me by Anthony on a on a lift that should have never been operating. There you go. It's right. Well, yeah. And I, you know what, though? That's nice of you. But you, a bunch of students could have done what you did, and you were one of the few that decided to keep working and keep trying. Yeah, so. it's called it's dedication. Um, and if you're if you're passionate about something, which music is my passion, and I'm trying to incorporate it into the YouTube videos and the streams, but music, um, just for some reason grasped a hold of me, and I, I, I just I can't I can't put it into words. But it was just it was something like if I could, and like Daniel said, I would come to the church early on Sundays, and I would do it on Wednesdays too. Um, and just do a whole bunch of different things. And I was like, you know what? If we're going to make this uh, the best we possibly can, I got to invest as much time as I can into it. So that's yeah. why I would come in early and I would be at the church for 10 hours a day <laughs> setting stuff up. Um, yeah. And then I eventually, you know, turned that into an internship and things like that. Yeah. Well, it was a good investment. I know, yeah. I know how much I got out of it too. Like just getting to be your friend and getting to, it goes both ways. You know what I mean? So, yeah. Um, it was really cool. It's just funny how that was your first night. That was my first night. And um, I don't know. I'm just, I'm God has a way of working things out. All right. So I'm going to, I'm going to admit something. And because Annika's sitting right there next to you, this is, <laughs> I, I need, I need you to tell her this. Um, So there was uh, me and Daniel and Annika, they had, gotten really good friends with all the kids in the youth group like there was a group of students that we were we were all really really close and one day me and Annika were talking um about something I can't remember what it was but later that night there was this girl that I was talking to and we ended up started dating uh she looked at me and she was like I could have swore you were dating that Annika chick <laughs> there you go and I'm like and I'm stopping dead in my tracks I'm like you do realize that's the youth pastor's fiance and she was like, oh, no. <laughs> there you go. That's pretty funny. All right. Yeah. I thought uh, I, I thought that was the funniest thing ever. And I'm like, no. <laughs> like, nothing, cool. like nothing against Annika, but. No, I know. I know. Uh, it's just because you know her. Right. So yeah. something else we could talk about. And I'm wearing, uh, Daniel can't see it, but I'm wearing my Chargers gear. Let's talk football. Um, All right, there you go. 2019 offseason, uh, what's your opinions? Uh, Daniel's a big Jaguars fan, so give me your thoughts. I should have led with this. Oh, man, 2019. We, the next time Nick Foles, as people might know, um, I did not want them to do this, but they did it. That's fine. So now that he's a Jaguar, I'm in. That's fine. I will convince myself. <laughs> um, and let me think, what else? Uh, God, Telvin Smith randomly left the Jaguars. <laughs> no one knows why. It's, and he's just posting on Instagram every day the weirdest stories. So I try to decrypt what they mean, why he might come back. And I'm super terrified that Jalen Ramsey is going to leave the Jaguars and demand a trade. So that's about where I am with the Jaguars. The last, Not last season, but the season before when we almost went to the Super Bowl was one of the best years of my entire life when it comes to football. Um, after the Jags lost to the Patriots, I was at my in-laws, and there was like 20 people there, and I was so sad. I had to leave. <laughs> not like, you know, not like stormed out. I was like, yeah. I was like, guys, I, I got to just we'll take a walk. I went to a gas station and got the biggest thing of frozen yogurt you could ever <laughs> imagine, and I sat and listened to Jaguars radio as people called in, and this guy, I swear, man, this guy called the local station. He was crying, and I wanted to cry. It was so sad. 
anyways, so. Sounds like Annika after any Vikings games. Yeah, exactly. So, you know, that's me and the Jags. And I just, uh, I hope and pray this year is, uh, you know, maybe Nick Foles can bring the magic that he had in yeah, Philadelphia here to Jacksonville. Yeah, and I mean, you know, they're, they're putting, uh, they're giving him, like, they're investing in him. Like, they gave him all the money. They're um, going out and they're getting receivers for him. Like, they got uh, Chris Conley from the Chiefs. They yeah, went and signed. that's it. They, they could have gotten a little more. We, we don't have any weapons. They, they upgraded tight end, but I don't know. Wide receivers. They yeah, well, to, man. Well, when you guys were really good, you had, uh, was it Keelan Cole um, and a couple other known names just, like, emerge out of nowhere. I don't know. We need that to happen again. Marquise Lee, maybe he'll get back to full health. I don't know. We, but I don't know. That's the thing. Like you guys, it doesn't matter with with the Chargers when your QB is that good. It just doesn't matter that much. But I don't know. If right. Foles, Foles, Foles isn't as good as Philip Rivers. Now I will say this: if Ramsey does demand a trade, they've got to trade him for a number one wide receiver. Uh, I don't know. I mean, I just don't want to see him traded. Uh, well, yeah, he's if, he's really good, and he's like that defense is like really good. But you you got to admit that it's it's now this year is now or never for the Jacksonville Jaguars to win a Super Bowl because you got to think um, they offloaded Malik Jackson and was it Deshaun Gibson? Gone. Gibson's gone. Barry Church is gone. Jackson's gone. I don't know, and then hopefully Jan stays, the Yannick and Gakway. Well, yeah, he'll be the he'll be the, like the nexus of the defense for years to come. But I mean, your Calais Campbell, he's getting close to retiring. This is probably it. I mean, so retire. This is probably it this year. Yeah, and then you also got Marcel Darius, who has never been like an elite defensive lineman. The only reason why he's you know been decent with the Jaguars is because he doesn't have to do it all with like the teams he's been on. He has pieces around him to be able to help him succeed. But I think with the Nick Foles thing, I honestly, um, when I was working at the airport, um, all my coworkers were Jaguar fans and we would talk every Sunday about Jaguar stuff. Um, cause they were trying to get me to be a Jaguars fan, but it's not going to happen. <laughs> Daniel's been doing this for years, but it's not going to happen. Um, but I think they're doing the right things for Foles. They went out and got his offensive coordinator that he went and won a Super Bowl with. Um, Terrell Pryor, something I just found out, his offensive coordinator, when he was in Cleveland the year he had that breakout year, was also DeFilippo. This is true. I did not know that. We were, that's uh, it's a good connection. And Ohio State, you know. Yeah, Anytime yeah, and Ohio State... State and it, it's, you know, it's Ohio State. We're the greatest university on the face of the planet. Um, <laughs> but there's no bias there. <laughs> yeah, none. Um, I think that Jacksonville, I mean, even, and everybody's like, if Nick Foles can play at 50% of what he did during his Super Bowl year, he'll still take Jacksonville to the playoffs. Oh, man. I tell you what, that gets me excited. I hope that's true. I don't know. You know what? I'm so skeptical right now in like one snap into the season when Nick Foles makes his first completion. I'm just going to be a complete homer again. I'll be all in. No, I won't be skeptical. And, I won't and then myself to hopefully he's not another Tanner Lee. That kid was garbage. Tanner Lee, that was one of the – that should go down at all time. The preseason, if he had more fumbles than completions, it was it was awesome how bad he was in the preseason. <laughs> I have no idea how he got drafted, but you know he's Tanner Lee, yeah. Jaguars. <laughs> and it goes into another long line of what were you doing, Jacksonville? Because you know drafting a punter in what the second or third round, third round, and Russell Wilson goes like ten picks or maybe a pick later. Right? Yeah, and. The Jags, man. There's been a. There's been. There's a, been so a many. There's so many quarterbacks that they could have had. They could have had Carson Wentz, Jared Goff. They we could have had. Straight up for those. Well, we yeah. Had Watson. Watson. Um. Wilson. Mahomes. Mahomes yeah. And Heck, you could even have Lamar that. Jackson. I know. I was saying. I was saying, and you're probably gonna laugh at me for this. I was saying last year after that whole debacle with uh, him and TJ Yeldon at the end of the season, trade him to Baltimore for Joe Flacco. <laughs> well, I'm, I, that was, I was worried that might happen. 
but I'm not a big Flacco believer. So I'm glad. Flacco would have probably been an upgrade over Bortles, but I'm not a huge Any, Flacco guy. A trash can is an upgrade over Blake Bortles. Yeah, it was it was pretty rough at the end there. He uh he's an he was an enigma. He just would get so hot and then yep. be terrible for like ten weeks and then have, you know, a stretch where he just get incredibly hot again. True story. The day after this cause he signed his extension on a Saturday. That Sunday I was working at the airport. I ran into him at the Starbucks just past security and was talking to him. I'm, I'm holding back because I had to be professional because I was at work holding back everything that I wanted to say to him. And then I was like, I was like, James, don't do it. Don't do it. He, you know, this is, this year was a flop. He'll next year. He'll return to form. And lo and behold, he was, he went right back to the trash can. He crawled out of. Well, I, I know. I wish he, um, he seems like a really nice person person that's always the thing with Blake he's I, he's I a really cool going. guy in real life but um, it, it was more like the Blaine Gabbert era I saw Blaine Gabbert a couple times I never even wanted to meet Blaine Gabbert <laughs> Blaine Gabbert was terrible to watch at least Blake when he was bad he was so bad it was kind of entertaining to watch but right I'm glad, the, I'm glad Blake Bortles era is over yeah and the Chargers Listen, it is a warning. The Chargers should be preparing for the end of the Philip Rivers era now. I know, and we we are. We drafted Easton Stick out of North Dakota State. In what round? Uh, like the sixth or seventh. Well, see, that's a flyer. I mean, maybe he'll turn in something, but I don't know. He was we- he was a national champion at North Dakota State. <laughs> he followed in the footsteps of Carson Wentz, although I don't want him to follow in the footsteps of tearing his ACL. There you go. But give him a couple of years, and plus we have Tyrod Taylor um, as like the immediate backup. So it's it's looking good on the quarterback department. Um, we have our number one receiver for years to come. I don't ever see us getting rid of Keenan Allen. He's um, good. And everything is just going right. Um, last year, the one thing that I was really disappointed in, we were so good. Like we were what frustrated me the year that the Jaguars were doing so well is we should have made the playoffs that year. And then um, we had that fluky game against you guys. Right. Yeah, don't don't get me started. I was at that game. Don't get me started. I was I was there when that happened. I was in the end zone with a friend where Myers kicked that game winning field goal. Out. So I don't want to hear about that. But um but no, it's because um for Buffalo to have made the playoffs that year, a lot of stuff had to happen. And from what I understand, we had the tiebreaker. Like, we beat Buffalo earlier in the season because that was when they benched Tyrod and put in Nathan Peterman, and he came in and threw five interceptions in the first half. Um, And we beat them pretty pretty badly, but they got into the playoffs over us, which I didn't understand. So that was really – I was really salty because of that. Because I thought we were – Yeah, with tiebreakers, it's really confusing, but – I thought we were we were playing pretty decent that year and we could have, you know, made a run but last year I legitimately thought like and this isn't my um optimistic self that I normally am that's not really warranted and you know what I'm talking about Daniel yeah um where I can just spout off random stuff I legitimately thought we had a chance to win the Super Bowl last year you know you guys did yeah I don't think you're being crazy that New England game was such a disappointment because it guys, it really was, was really good and we, we tried to do what the Warriors have been doing the last couple of years and play, like, super small. During during that New England game, and I don't know why Gus Bradley did this, but You're we didn't... You're welcome for... There you go. You're welcome, Gus Bradley. We'll, 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 get, we'll get to that in a second. We'll get to that in a second. But we ran no linebackers at all. I mean, it's an interesting idea. It didn't work out, but it was an interesting <laughs> idea. Because, and I think... Because we started out the season running linebackers, and I think on the very first play of the season, when it was Patrick Mahomes to Tyreek Hill for a touchdown, I think um, Gus Bradley was like, we got to keep up with that speed. So he pulled all of his linebackers off the field and threw out all of his defensive backs. And just played this weird hybrid. Yeah, and it it worked for... Because we have, you know, in our division, we had Case Keenum, who was kind of mobile. You have Patrick Mahomes, who was, like, super mobile, and Derek Carr, who's kind of mobile. Uh, so, in those games, um, it worked. But when you come up against Tom Brady, where 
that man can he's like Peyton Manning. It's a it's a beautiful, ugly thing to see him run the football. <laughs> he is slow. If you if you get what I mean. Yeah. Um but I don't know because what would happen is our our DBs would play like linebackers against the Patriots, and every single time on third down, the worst player in the entire NFL, Julian Edelman, would always sneak into whatever little crevice he could find and make the conversion, and it's irritating. It, it is irritating. It was. It, they always have one of these. All us, Welker, all us, Amendola. They're just. They just keep churning them out, man. And now. Like, I wasn't happy that the man uh, was taking steroids, but I was glad he was suspended for four games last year. <laughs> this is the dark I mean, side of Morton Power, guys. That's right. Yeah. Well, I know. Uh, you know what? We should end on a happy note. The Chargers okay. and Jags' outlook both look pretty good this year. Yeah. We, we, we um, both have hope. I, and honestly, with the Jaguars, like, that division, the AFC South has, like, gotten, other than the Titans, the top three teams is it's the Colts, Jags, and Texans, um, and the Titans. The only real good thing about them is Derrick Henry. He, uh, well, yeah, with where you, yeah, he's uh, he comes it on against the Jags. It's like he doesn't do much. I don't know. He, well, it's because it's his hometown run. team. This is right. He seems so, to really get up for those games. And uh, <laughs> another true story is I've met Derrick in real life. Um, his nickname in high school um is was Shaka. Um, cause every time he would run the football, you'd, you'd be in shock. Um, cause the kid in high school or no, I take this back in middle school. This kid was six foot tall, 215 pounds. And I'm like, where in the world did you come from? He's a big dude. Because, um, he went to Yulee high school. I went to Hilliard high school and Hilliard and Yulee are like 30, 30 miles apart. If, if that. Um, so it's a small area. So we, we played them a couple times a year and oh, that, that kid, something else. He's, he, uh, he's a lot. I don't know. Yeah. He, he, you'd think he'd be better, but I don't know. He should just act like he's playing the Jags every Sunday. <laughs> yeah. But that look is looking pretty good. Um, for both teams. I, I still say the Jaguars probably won't make the playoffs just oh. because I'm a Jags fan. And my Chargers will repeat and be the uh, have the second best record in the National Football League again this year. Actually, I think we're gonna have the best record. Um, oh. That's besides the point. There's my optimistic self uh, showing out. But um, I think that's gonna do it. Um, this was a really good first episode back. Thank you, Daniel, for uh, for coming on. Um, me. Yeah, man, we'll definitely uh, get together again here soon. Um, cool. It is. It has been too long. Uh, since the last time, well, when the last time we seen each other, is, it had been way too long um, right. since since we had hung out. So uh, thank you so much for for coming on um, and talking with me for the last forty five minutes to an hour. Uh, but hopefully you guys enjoy the uh, the relaunch. We're gonna start doing these once a week. I have uh, three other guests lined up on the podcast. But thank you guys so much for watching. If you enjoyed, leave a like. Let me know in the comment section if there's any other people in the gaming space that I should have on the podcast. Leave that in the comment section. And if you're new, make sure you hit the subscribe button and turn on the notifications so you don't miss a video. And we'll see you guys on the next video.